Listening Library presents City of Lies by Leon Tanner. Read for you by Claudia Black. The ancient tale of Frisia, Crown Princess of Man, is a curious one. There was a time when people knew it only as a children's story. Now, of course, it is famous because it played such an important part in the life of Goldie Roth, fifth keeper of the Museum of Dunt. Frisia was a warrior princess, a brilliant archer and swordswoman, and a natural leader. She lived in what was at the time one of the most dangerous places in the world, the royal court of Man. In those days, the court was full of plots and vicious intrigues. At the centre of most of them was the king's physician, an ambitious woman who was secretly in the pay of Graf von Nagel, the rebel warlord. This physician, helped by members of the royal guard, carried out several assassination attempts on Frisia and her father, the king. Frisia survived these plots to lead a tiny army against von Nagel and his followers. The result of the ensuing battle has never been clear. Some say that von Nagel was defeated and died with Frisia's sword through his heart. Others say that it was the princess who died, and that her body was carried away by the beasts of the field, who had risen up to fight beside her. No one knows what happened to the physician. From The Museum of Dunt, A Hidden History A Message from the Museum The scream woke Goldie Roth from a deep sleep. She sat bolt upright, thinking for a moment that she was back in the terrible events of six months ago, with the city of Jewel on the brink of invasion and her friend Toadspit about to be murdered in front of her eyes. Then she heard Ma's quiet voice in the next room, and she knew that Pa had had another nightmare. She slipped out of bed, threw a dressing gown over her shoulders and hurried into her parents' room. Pa, she said, are you all right? Pa smiled weakly up at her from a knot of bedclothes. Sorry to wake you, sweeting, he mumbled. Your father had a bad dream, said Ma, but it's gone now. And she too smiled, though her knuckles were white and her fingers trembled. It pierced Goldie to the heart to see them trying to pretend that nothing was wrong. She unknotted the bedclothes and tucked them around Pa's shoulders, wishing there was something more she could do. Were you dreaming about the House of Repentance again? She said. Pa flinched. He and Ma glanced at each other, and a world of pain and sorrow passed between them. It was a little more than ten months since the two of them had been thrown into the dungeons of the House of Repentance. They had never told Goldie what had happened to them there, but she could see the scars that were left behind. Pa had dreadful nightmares. Ma had a cough that sounded as if it would tear her lungs out. They were both too thin, and even now, long after their release, they had an exhausted look about them as if something was gnawing at them from the inside. Goldie wished that they would talk to her about it, but they never did. Instead, they sighed and changed the subject. Uh, uh... Message came for you today, sweeting, said Pa, struggling to sit up. Where did I put it? It was from the Museum of Dunt. This time it was Goldie who flinched, although she hid it so well that her father didn't notice. Memories flooded through her. Toad spit his whole body plastered in mud, turned toward her and laughed. A warm canine tongue swept across her face and a deep voice rumbled, you are as brave as a bristle hound. With an effort, she dragged herself back to the present. Pa was fumbling for a scrap of paper that lay on the table beside the bed. Here it is, his forehead creased. It's from Herodan and Olga Chivoga. It seems that they want you to be the museum's fifth keeper. Fifth keeper of the Museum of Dunt? Familiar longing welled up inside Goldie so suddenly and so strongly that she could hardly breathe. She said nothing, but Pa must have seen some echo of it on her face. Do you 
Do you want to be Fifth Keeper, sweeting? Because, because if you do, interrupted Ma, we wouldn't stop you. We wouldn't dream of stopping you. It's just, it's just that it's such a big responsibility, said Pa. We're worried that it might be too much for you. And, Ma gripped Goldie's hand, and you'd have to be away from home such a lot. She began to cough. Goldie patted her gently on the back and tried not to think about the Museum of Dunt and how much, how very much, she wanted to be fifth keeper. Of course, said Pa, chewing his lip. It's possible that Hero Dan and Olga Chavolga really need your help. And if they do, if they need you, then you mustn't hesitate, said Ma. She tried to let go of Goldie's hand, but didn't quite manage. Your father and I talked about this earlier. We did, said Pa. And we both agreed. If they need you, you must go. Goldie could hardly bear it. They were doing their best to be fair, but she could see how much they hated the thought of her being away from home for even a little while. And so she forced every scrap of longing out of her voice and said, They don't really need me. They've got sinew and toad spit to help them. Pa frowned, wanting to believe her. Are you sure? You're not staying home because of us, are you? said Ma, still clutching her hand. You mustn't do that. We want you to be happy. A warm canine tongue swept across her face. Goldie smiled. I am happy, she said. And because she was a trained liar, she sounded as if she meant it. She sat with her parents until they drifted off to sleep again. Then she tiptoed back to her room, pulled on her smock, woolen stockings and jacket, and slipped out the front door. Ten months was not such a long time, really, but to Goldie, hurrying through the silent old quarter toward Toadspit's house, it felt like a lifetime. Ten months ago, she had worn a silver guard chain that tied her to her parents or to one of the Blessed Guardians. She had never been anywhere alone and was almost as helpless as an infant. But then she ran away and took refuge in the Museum of Dunt. And in the months that she spent there, she grew up. More than that, she became an accomplished thief and a skilled liar. She learned the three methods of concealment and the first song and how to act with a steely courage, even when she was almost overwhelmed with fear. The lessons fed some deep need inside her, and the museum quickly came to feel like home. The only thing missing was Ma and Pa. They were locked up in the House of Repentance, imprisoned by the Fugelman, the leader of the Blessed Guardians. And why were they imprisoned? Goldie turned the corner onto Gunboat Canal. Because of me, she whispered. In the duel of ten months ago, Running away was a crime. The Fugelman could not get his hands on Goldie, but it was the easiest thing in the world to pluck Ma and Pa from their beds and drag them before the Court of the Seven Blessings. They were tried and sentenced for being the parents of a criminal child. It was my fault, thought Goldie.